Hi, everybody. There's probably nobody even there yet, and I'm just talking to myself, but that's okay. What else is new, right? <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's me, Brady, from Sparrow Quilt Company, and welcome to our Stash Buster series. We're back, baby. It's been a while. It's really been a while. We haven't done Stash Busters yet since we've been in our new location, so we're all pretty excited to be back at it. Really, really excited. And we are thrilled to be doing this beautiful quilt designed by my very good friend, Sheila Vander Linden, also known as the YEG Quilter. And we are going to be working on some curved piecing, as you can see. This is a Drunkard's Path block uh, with some sashing and cornerstones in between. And it's really the, um, the layout of your colors that lean, that, you know, makes for the great look of this pattern. I am going to be switching up the colors. I'm going to be working in these beautiful colors that my lovely Landon selected for me yesterday. So thank you, Landon, who's behind the scenes, along with my Maddie, who's also over here. So I thought I would start with uh, cutting the fabrics right off the bolt so you can see we are uh, ready for that. And look, Landon's got everything labeled for me, so I hopefully cannot mess this up. That's the plan anyways. So you guys, um, if you have just joined us for the very first time, welcome. The Stash Buster series is an effort that we came up with, um, a movement in order to help quilters use up their stash because I know you all have some. I have loads of it. Um, I need to use mine up. I know you need to use yours up. So we are providing these free patterns and tutorials to help you get through your fabric stash that I know is taking over your house. Just kidding. Hopefully you've got it all crammed in somewhere um, discreet so it doesn't take over the house. You are going to visit us at sparrowquiltco.com and you are going to go to the Stash Busters page and you are going to download your Be Bold pattern. You can follow the link that's right above this pat right above this video and that will take you to the right place. As usual, we are going to have a giveaway. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but in order to qualify for the giveaway, you're going to share this video. Underneath the video, you're going to see the option to like, comment, and share. I want you to click share, and that will share this uh, video with all your quilting buds so that hopefully they can join in on the fun. Well, guys, have you been keeping busy? Have you been working on lots of your prior Stash Buster quilts? I hope if you finish them up that you will send them to us in an email. Uh, send them to info at sparrowquiltco.com. Or what you can also do is tag us on so social media. Use the uh, hashtag Sparrow Quilt Co. And we will see your uh, photos. And then hopefully you don't mind, we'll share them with our um, followers so that everybody can see how awesome you are and how awesome your quilt is. Where's everybody watching from today? I hope that you'll leave me a comment and let me know where you are in this big wide world. All, a lot of our buds are in uh, Vancouver uh, at the Big Quilt Canada show that is happening this weekend. So people from all over the world have uh, gone out there to see that show. We're not there this weekend because Miss Landon is getting married next weekend. So while I'm on that topic of the marriage, we won't be here next Friday, okay? We're going to start the quilt today. We're going to do a little bit of cutting out. We're going to skip next Friday, but we'll be back the following Friday. Elle, can you get me a date for the following Friday? Just so I... Okay, so June 15th will be our next broadcast, okay? So nothing next Friday. We're going to leave you high and dry and ignore you all weekend. And then next... The Friday after that, on June 15th, is when we will be back at 10.30 a.m. And we will get down and... Um, <laughs> down and dirty. <laughs> get down. All right. Do some dancing. So this quilt is called Be Bold. In case you're just joining us, please visit us at sparrowquiltco.com so you can download your version of the Be Bold pattern and follow along. Yeah, then there's a link above the video. Link above this video that'll make it even easier. You won't even have to type, you just can click. That's way easier. So look at our colors that Landon has chosen for us and labeled so nicely. So our lighter colors are going to be in the outer corners of the color. <laughs> look down here, you can't see. So in the outer uh, corners, we're going to have the lighter colors. And as we progress towards the center, we're going to move into our darker colors. And then the green is going to be these nice little cornerstones here. We're going to keep white as our sashing, but our all of our background colors are going to vary through these grays. So I've got Scout 
uh, dove. This one's called gray fox. It's almost silvery like my silver fox, Maddie. If any of you saw that the other day. And this is my lightest gray down here. It's got a little bit of a floral print to it, so that is going to give it a bit more interest. For now, I'm going to set aside my background colors, and I'm going to start with my bright, shiny colors because it's rainy outside today, and I need some color in my life. Oh, from Denmark. Welcome. That's cool. Welcome. West Virginia. Cool. Light color. So what I've done is printed off my pattern, and I have taken the names of all my bolts, and I've written them in to my instructions. I'm going to show you down here. Along the side there, I wrote in the colors that I'm using because I'm easily confused. And we've talked about before how I've got a fruit fly brain. So if I do these little things to keep myself organized, then I'm not going to accidentally cut the wrong fabric. Okay, so I have gone through the pattern and um, anywhere that I had black prior, well, I've now put in scout and put in sweet pea so that I know those are the two colors that I need to cut. Uh, my dark gray is called Dove, and I just wrote in my actual fabric colors beside the names that are in the pattern, and that will help me stay nice and organized. I've also got a little sticky note, and I'm going to put it under the section that I'm working on so that I can keep myself organized. Especially while I'm talking to you all, it helps me stay on track. So my first color here is Dandelion. And I'm going to start there. The first thing I need to do is cut one strip at five and a half inches wide. Hi, Olive. Thanks. From Maui. You lucky girl in Maui. Wow, it's got to be early. What's the time difference over there? What time is it in Maui? We got 1030 AM here. So I got a fun new tool for my ruler. It's this <laughs> cool little handle. Do they, can they see the close up? So it's, it attaches on with these suction cups and I can just put my fingers into that little slot there. And oh my word, I cannot believe how much faster it makes my cutting. Because normally I have to kind of pry at the edge to lift it. This, I just move it all over the place and I am quicker than I normally am, which may or may not be a good thing yet to be determined. 6.30 a.m., my goodness. Well, thanks for getting up so early to watch my show from Maui. <laughs> it's our show. It's true, it's our show. We all work hard to create this. All right, so my strip here needs to be five and a half inches wide. So I... I'm using a six inch ruler. I'm leaving half an inch off this side and I'm going to zip up along this right hand side. And that is all I need of dandelion. So we'll just dandelion. This is a Riley Blake and they've got a full line of Crayola um, is it shades confetti cottons and they're all based on Crayola colors. So this is Crayola dandelion and uh, colors are just so vibrant. Sorry, babe. Oh, okay. So in order to get the free pattern, you're going to click the link above this video. You'll have to put in your name and email and then we email the pattern to you. It'll come attached to an email. All right. So now this, dandelion. I'm going to subcut this into four squares that are five and a half inches wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is just trim off my salvages because I don't need them. And I got this fun new ruler from Landon and, uh, Landon and Matt. They went to Portland for a uh, quilt market. And I'm quite liking it. I love the size of it. I'm also going to steal my suction cups right off of here, ripping it apart. Just going to loosen those up. A <laughs> little bit of moisture helps it a bit. 
And then I'm just going to pop that on there. And now I can wing this one around nice and fast too. So this one is the style of ruler where it's got the slider on the back so I can adjust it and make sure that I'm getting really accurate cuts. I need five and a half. And so I'm going to slide this over. And this one's really easy. It just like kind of pops into place really um, easily. So I can just slide that over where I need it. And it's got this non-slip edge as well, which I think is very beneficial because we all want to be accurate. I forgot to move this ahead of time. So I'm just going to pry that out of there. I like that it's not a sticker, that it actually, um, there's little holes in the ruler and then the little non-slip grip has little bumps and they just pop in there. So my sticker will never wear out. It will always be effective. From where? Malaysia. Cool. All right. The ruler with the slider is available on our website. Oh yeah. And this is not the only um, item that is available from this company um we have just started carrying all their products so they in this little suction cup handle um goes with the the ruler but it also um helps you combine the rulers together so i could take two of these and put them end to end and make a really long 24 inch ruler or i could put them side by each and make myself a square ruler and it just uses these connector things and they've got all sorts of little add-ons that are going to help you with your precision in your piecing and your cutting and it's just a whole full system so all of those items will be on the website a little bit later for now i've just got the suction cup handle and the ruler now this one also has a finger guard which we all know is very helpful um, none of us want to chop our fingers off while we're quilting so we want to do everything we can to protect ourselves and i really like that ruler guard it does also come off if you don't want to use it i'm not sure why but you may have that preference and that is fine so here I'm going to do five and a half inch squares. And I need to cut four of those. I got my fabric doubled up, so I'm cutting two at a time. And that rubberized edge, it really does hold nice. No, the slider doesn't, the slider only goes up to five and a quarter. So I had to remove it for the five and a half, but that's okay. Never, right, Laura? I'm with you on that one. It's precious. <laughs> I love to tell a story where I was like cutting so carefully and Matt's like, Brady, it's fabric, it's not gold. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, so that is extra. And these are my five and a half inch squares and I am going to actually check things off as I go so I have done this Kate dandelion is complete now let's move on to this is amber and it again is a Riley Blake and this is a Riley Blake shade so it's got a little bit of texture to it do you just keep that close up on all the time Okay, so you can see it's got a little bit of variance, a bit of a tone on tone. It's quite pretty. Hi, Cynthia. Welcome. From Vancouver Island. I'm a little bit jealous. Just a little bit jealous. I'm going to set up this chair so I have somewhere to throw my fabric. Pardon me just a minute. There we go. Now this next one, my amber, I'm going to cut two strips at five and a half. And then I'm going to cut 12 five and a half inch squares. So let's lay this out. So we've got at least 11 inches. And these are going to be five and a half. And again, I'm just going to move this back and forth because it really does make a difference for me. I like it a lot. And it's quick to put on and off. So five and a half.
And we'll just zip up a side there. Get that one out the way. And then we need a second piece that's five and a half inches wide. And then we're going to turn those sideways and we're going to sub cut them into squares. Okay. So let's just get this out of the way because it's big and bulky. Now, I mentioned earlier that we were going to do a little giveaway. And what I'm going to be giving away is one of these little 6 by 12 guideline rulers so that you can see how nice and easy it is to use. So in order to qualify for that giveaway, you are going to share this video. Share this video here on Facebook so that your quilting buds can join in on the fun. And if you are a late joiner and you're just getting here, click the link above this video so that you can go to the website and get your um, copy of the Be Bold pattern. And the great thing is that Sheila has included some templates. Her husband, Ron, was extremely helpful. He went through and made all these great little diagrams. It's not easy to do those little diagrams for patterns, guys. It really isn't. So we're really lucky that uh, Ron is always willing to help out. Look at that beautiful diagram he did up. And then on the very last page, you're going to find the templates that you need for doing the cutting. We're not going to get to the template part today. We'll just cut all our strips and squares. And then when I join you again on June 15th, we will do our actual cutting of the quarter circles and the backgrounds and stuff. But now we are working on amber and we need to cut a bunch of five and a half inch squares. So we're just going to go back and forth with this little suction cup thingy. <laughs> now I've got it all popped apart. I was really surprised to learn that this ruler is made out of poly carbonite which is and grandpa told me that it's the same stuff that motorcycle windshields are made out of so it is strong and the glasses just the lens of your glasses so matt told me that the fellow who uh manufactures this ruler took it up to the third story of a hotel room and tossed it out onto the sidewalk to show someone that it truly is uh very very strong so that's kind of reassuring, you know, to know that your rulers are that strong, that they're going to last you a long time and maybe hold up to being dropped. I know they used to tell us to be so careful when we had our rulers in the car in the wintertime because they'd be brittle. So a strong ruler is a good thing. I'm clumsy today, guys. Clumsy. I do need a second handle. I agree. I don't know, I've got a whole bunch of goodies over here. I looked through, I didn't see one, but I can look again. So five and a half inch squares is what we're after. I need a total of 12. So I've got four layers of fabric here. I can make three cuts. Five and a half, five and a half. There we go. And we'll do one more cut that will give us 12. All right, so now I've got my dandelion cut. I've got my amber cut. Next is my pumpkin. Don't these sound delicious? I like pumpkin anyways. So let's cross this off our list so that Brady can stay organized. Those are sub cut into 12, five and a half inch squares. Do, do, do. Move my sticky note along. Next is my dark medium color, which I said was pumpkin. And I am going to cut one strip at five and a half. Did you find another handle for me? Then found me another handle. Now I don't have to switch back and forth. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. 
So what was really cool about this ruler system is that they recognize a lot of us own our own rulers already. So they sell little accessories that allow you to combine your current rulers and to add on the neat little features that I've told you about that ruler. So I think that's really cool. Uh, and like I said, we'll have that all up on the website a little bit later today. This one needs to be squared up first. So I'm going to do that before because this edge is a little bit wonky. This is a newer Riley Blake to our store, this particular one. It's called Kisses. It's got all these tiny little X's all over it. I think it's just the cutest. I also brought it in in red and, well, a couple other colors too. We were looking through the shop and we had no reds. And I also realized the other day I have no purples. So it might be time to order some fabric. All right, so here's a five and a half inch strip. Just gonna zip along. What's going on there? Okay. Give that a little slice. Get this pumpkin out the way. And then we can turn that one sideways and subcut it into our squares, just like we did with the other colors. Now, hopefully you've been watching all along, but if you have just joined us, welcome. Follow the link above the video so that you can go get your copy of the Be Bold pattern so that you can follow along. And while I remember, we won't be here next Friday, but we will be here the following Friday on June 15th. Next weekend, our Landon is getting married. So... We're all driving to Kelowna, which is a nice, good nine, ten hour drive. And uh, the weather's going to be beautiful. Thank goodness. I've been watching closely. She's getting married on the roof of a hotel. So we need nice weather. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut off my salvage. And how many of these do I need? Six. So I'm going to make three cuts. And we'll go five and a half again. And we'll do a total of three of those so that we have six squares all together. Five and a half, five and a half. Can't get too speedy, otherwise I'll make mistakes. There we go. <laughs> Two handles, I know, right? Thank you, Landon. There we go. That one's ready. And now we have six five and a half inch squares of pumpkin. I'll try and keep those in some sort of order. Isn't it? It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so now I can go back to the first page and I better cross this off. Dun, da, dun, dun. And let's go back to page one. We are gonna work on red now. Again, it's a single strip at five and a half and then we will subcut again. Keep that one there, put this one over here. Oh, cool. Oh, I'm just about to use that. Can I just use that one? So this time for Quilt Market, it was Matt and Landon that went down to Portland. And um, I stayed home with the children's. Thanks, Al. Again, we better trim up this edge. So that was the May long weekend, and it seemed like everybody was going away that weekend. There was kids going north to Grand Prairie. A bunch of the kids went to New York. These guys went to Portland. It was a busy weekend for everybody, so that was kind of exciting to watch where everybody was. We're so lucky to have Facebook these days, so you can keep an eye on what everybody's up to. I feel like you're part of the fun. Okay, so there's five and a half. Right, I just need a single strip this time. One strip, you got it. Yeah, get. It. I'll I'll have you prep it for my next one. Oh yeah, 
So Landon's just prepping the add-on that we are going to put onto the regular Omni Grip ruler, and then you'll get to be you'll get to see that in action and how that works. So this is another one of those Kisses fabrics with all the cute little X's on it. Can you see them? I hope so. They're sweet. I'd like to get the whole line. Because it's watching on their phones. Okay. <laughs> all right. So maybe you didn't see that close-up that I just showed you. I'm sorry. I didn't know that my close-up was shut off. So there I'm trying to show you all the little X's on the fabric. It's just the cutest. And like I said, this line is called Kisses. So it's like a, um, a full line of tone on tones. Hopefully that was long enough for you to see those little X's. <laughs> I just think they're the cutest. All right. So now we're ready to cross cut that. And I better trim off my salvage first because I don't want to sew any salvage into my quilt. Not that it would be the end of the world. I put salvage into quilt lots. Sometimes you're in a pinch and you just don't have enough and you got to use it. And it's not going to make or break your quilt. All right. So this time... We need six squares, so that means we're making three cuts because I got two layers of fabric. Uh oh, I missed the beginning there. Do, 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 do. All right, everybody, have you shared this video for your chance to win? Like I said, I'm going to be giving away one of these uh, guidelines rulers. It's a six by 12 ruler, very versatile for your quilting needs. And it's got some neat little add-ons that I'm sure you're gonna love. There's a five and a half. All right, so there's my three cuts. And let's look at how they progress through the colors here. This is gonna look great. Layer them all up. Do you have that compulsion to just organize them all perfectly and neatly. I do. It's a little bit. Oh yeah. That's going to look so good. Let's see. Hopefully you can see those in the close up there. My progression of dandelion through amber through pumpkin and the last color was called red. It's just plain old red. All right, so Landon has added on my slider here, and it is, it creates this little um, ridge. Thank you, Maddie. <laughs> creates a little ridge that you can bump your fabric up against, and it holds your ruler in place really, really well when you're trying to do your cuts. So I think now she's applying the anti-slip strips. So this is an upgrade kit that you can purchase that can make your ruler at home um, have all these qualities that my ruler here has. So hopefully you got to see my pretty little squares and I can set those aside. Now this is all scrap so I don't want to get those confused in here. Next let's move on to our backgrounds. Oh, nice. So we've played with another ruler that has a slider on the back. And one of the downsides to that is when you set it down, there's a bit of a tip because the ridge underneath uh, makes the ruler off balance. And so this ruler, when you add on your non-slip strips, it equals out that balance and it doesn't. Oh, sorry guys, that must have slipped. I had it on both, but... Hopefully you can hear me better now. Is that better? I put it on the outside now. It slipped under my jacket. I'm sorry. All right. So let's give this um, upgraded ruler a try. Now I need to cut. Let's go with our darkest background to start. Yeah. 
So this is a um, add-on. It's kind of an upgrade of sorts. It's just got the silicone um, suction cups on the backside. This can be applied to any ruler. And you could also use it, um, let's say I wanted to put the two rulers together. I could use it to join them like this. And then I would have a longer um, edge there. Say I wanted to square up the edge of a quilt. I could join these two rulers together and make my cuts like that. So it's really a cool little add-on uh, that you can get. But as usual with suction cups, you got to get them wet before they stick. I am making the quilt behind me. It's called Be Bold. And welcome, by the way. Um, you can find it by clicking the link above this video. That'll take you to the website. And you have to put in your uh, name and email. And then you'll receive an email with the pattern attached. So today we're just starting to cut out all our fabrics. And then in two weeks when we join again, we will cut out all our little quarter circles and our backgrounds for our circles. All right, so this is Scout. Let's double check. Yes, ma'am. This is Scout and I need to cut two 10 inch strips. So let's go ahead and do that now. This is just an almost army, dark, dark army gray green. Which means Scout is the perfect name for that. And this time I'm going to use the lines on my cutting mat to indicate the 10 because my ruler isn't that wide. And the great thing about these cutting mats is that they are accurate. They are really bang on. So even if you cut using the lines on your cutting mat, you're going to be just fine. All right. So at my 10, I'm going to go ahead and give a slice there. Oh, that's nice. That does not slip at all. That's good. I like that. So like I said, Landon added the non-slip strips onto the back side of this ruler for me, and it's not going anywhere. Let's see what happens if I keep my fingers down here. Oh, it didn't slide. It was like magic. All right, so now I've got two 10-inch strips. And now I'm going to turn those and cut them into 10 inch squares. So let's get this out of here. The link for the pattern is above this video, or you can visit us at sparrowquiltco.com. And then uh, visit the Stash Busters page. You'll have to put in your name and email in order to get the pattern emailed to you. This is a double-sided two-color mat. It, um, this one measures 36 by 24, and you can find them on the website. Just uh, search cutting mat on the website there, and you can get them in all kinds of sizes. So there's one that's smaller than this. There's one that's ginormous. It's 59 inches long. I love that mat. We keep it out there on the... Um, cutting island it's actually a kitchen island but we call it the cutting island because you can cut so much fabric on it these mats are so durable too because they're double-sided when it first arrived it was all rolled up and we were like ah but you know what you give it an hour or so and it just lays back flat again it's kind of like magic. Oh, okay, so it's like five seconds. It's really, really fast. Okay, so we are cutting 10 inch squares again. So I am going to trim off my salvage. I don't need to waste quite so much. How many do I need in total? Six. This is four layers. So, okay, just two full cuts. All right. Oh, 
Okay. All right, there goes my salvage. Boy, that finger guard helped me a lot there. Okay, so all the accessories that I've been talking about and showing you are going to be added to the website today. There's about 20 different accessories that are available. So just check in on the website a little bit later. Um, and we're going to do some videos on them this afternoon as well. All right, so here we are cutting 10 inch squares. And I'm just going to zip up along there. Like I said, I have to use the lines on my cutting mat for this one, but it's okay because this cutting mat is accurately marked. Get rid of that fold. And now I have got eight. I only need six, but it's always good to have extra. Uh-oh. Ha, ha, ha. Look what Brady forgot to remove before she started chopping stuff up. So, yeah, there's little bits of tape all the way through. Nice. Okay. So put those aside. That means scout is done, at least this part and the sub cutting. Um, we also need scout for the border. I'm gonna cut eight. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. <laughs> you caught me just in time. Maybe a little late. Now we need to cut eight strips at two and a half. So let's try this thing out with the slider on it and see how we do with two and a half inch strips. We're gonna bring back the scout. I need a bit more. So this is my regular OmniGrid ruler and I am going to set my slider at two and a half. Boy, I kinda like how this slides. You just push it along. So I have just shuffled my slider along so that it is lined up with the two and a half inch mark. And I've got my non-slip uh, add-on thing right there. And this, I believe, is made to fit any size ruler. Is that right, Elle? You, it Did it expand, kind yes, of? 12 to 24. 12 to 24. So you could use this on a smaller size ruler as well, if that's what you've got. So we're going to cut eight strips at two and a half inches. Hi, Instagram. Is it live over there too? Nice. Okay. So welcome, Instagram. If you're, obviously, you're just joining us because we just started filming there. We are working on the Be Bold pattern, which you can see behind me here. Visit us at sparrowquiltco.com and visit the Stash Busters page on the website there and you will be able to uh, put in your name and email and we will email you the PDF pattern called Be Bold and you can follow along with us. Right now I'm just cutting out all the fabrics. But we are going to be doing this uh, every Friday from now on, except next Friday. We'll all be away for our wedding. So join us again on the 15th. But stick around for today. Uh, we're going to be giving away one of these cool little rulers a little bit later. In order to qualify for that, you've got to share the video on Facebook. I'm pretty impressed with this, you guys. i got to use my little handle. That'll make me faster. So I'm just doing two and a half inch strips with my regular Omni Grip ruler, but I've added all the little upgrades so that I can have the anti-slip and the precision slider, plus this cool handle. It all makes me faster. I want to think I'm faster anyways. Oh, no slide, and I did not shuffle my hand that time at all. Okay, we're halfway there. I got four of those scout colored strips cut. It's nice to have that ridge on the underside. You just quickly butt it up against your fabric and it's in place. It's just right where you need it to be. There we go. I'm throwing stuff on the floor. How many have I got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I got one more to go. Hi, Texas. Welcome. 
Thanks for joining us today. We're pretty excited to be back. This is our first Stash Buster series in the new shop. Say that 10 times fast. Okay, there's my eight strips of that color. And that will be my border. So I'll just set those aside until much later. Put this back together. So hopefully you've been watching all along. If not, then please visit us at the website, sparrowquiltco.com, or click the link above this video. Instagram, I'm not sure if you've got a link, but sparrowquiltco.com will get you to the right place. Visit the Stash Busters page, put in your name and email, and you can get the free pattern called Be Bold that we are working on. All right. So now I've done all my Scout colored fabric. I'm going to circle this one so I don't miss it later. And let's go on to the dove color. I'm using dove instead of the dark gray. No, scout would be here, so dove will be here. Look, Laura. Let's remove it first, shall we? Get that out of there. And now in dove, we're going to cut three strips at 10 inches. So I'm going to need to open this up a little bit wider. Now these ones that I'm using are some Bella solids. They have a lot of colors in their solid range. And they're a nice affordable option for solids. I like that. All right, so we're cutting 10 inch strips, three of them. We need to go up to 30, so we'll open this up once more. And there we go. Now don't forget to share the video guys so that you can qualify to win one of the guidelines rulers that I've been using. Cut on the 20 and the 30. Oh gosh, I love this handle. There we go. All right, and we'll get this out of the way and then we'll stack those up. Is that all I need for Dove? Yes. It's a nice kind of browny gray. <clears throat> that warm brown gray has been really popular lately. Okay, let's get that out of the way here. And we'll stack these up so that we can cut them faster and easier because I'm all about the faster and the easier. I've been working on a quilt at home and it's little Union Jack uh, flag blocks. Holy moly, what a lot of work those are. They're not fast and easy, that's for sure. Tell Okay, so it is a little bit delayed. You may not get it instantly. If you've already signed up for the pattern, uh, give it a little bit of time. You'll have it by the end of today. Though it would be fun to join in and get quilting right now, wouldn't it? Okay, my salvage. You know, sometimes when the fabric isn't folded right in half and one side of the salvage is a little bit higher, I always feel like I'm wasting so much. But it's not the end of the world, is it? Let's remember that. All right, I think that'll do it. I just don't want those little dots from the salvage in there, but it doesn't matter. There we go, we got a 20 there. Okay, I'm gonna now cut these into 10 inch squares. And I'm kind of hanging off. Oh my goodness, I forgot to raise my table. No wonder I'm bending over so much. Huh? Are you telling me not to raise my table? Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Well. 10. I'll do it in just a second here. 20. All right. I just love this table. It's so great to have the option to raise your surface when it's plugged in.
Okay. Now I'm plugged back in. I've got power. All right, so I'm just going to raise up my table a little bit so I'm not bending over so much. That'll be better. Touch more. I love that I can adjust the height of that. It is so handy. And then I can sit back. I can lower it down and I can sit here to sew. There we go. All right, so that is my next shade of gray done. All right, all this has to go. It's driving me a little bit crazy. Get out. It's all landing on the floor anyways. Put that all in the trash. And let's move on to our next color. We finished Dove. Oh, Laura, you will love it. It is a gorgeous table. I love that I can raise the height of it. I also like that I can tilt it to one side. I can lower one side or the other. And you can also put on these non-slip um, little pads. And you can put your sewing machine on it and I could sit at one table and tip the table so that you're sewing really ergonomically correct. That's really cool. You can also do your cutting with it on an angle and so of course you would stand at one end rather than uh, here and you could do your cutting also very ergonomically. When your table is angled like that you're doing less leaning. You would be cutting more up like this so it's quite good for your back. Now we have our medium gray, which is called Gray Fox. And now I need to cut four strips of 10 inches, and then I'm going to subcut 15 10 inch squares. Then I need to cut three of these in half diagonally for my setting triangles. So this is what we will be doing there. Okay, there's two grays. The next gray will also have triangles. So let's start with four strips at 10 inches. Have you shared the video yet, guys? Your prize today is gonna to be one of these guidelines rulers. In order to qualify for the prize, you need to share the video, so go ahead and do that. On Facebook where you're watching, you're gonna see the option to like, comment, or share. And that's what you're going to do is hit the share button and then all your quilting buds can watch along with you and you may win a prize. So make sure you do that. Time for a water break. So they posted a link to the table in the comments. Um, you can always go back in later and find the link if you just want to stick with the video for now, but it's there in the comments for you. It's okay. So how many of these? Four, right? So let's cut two to start. I always line up my fold along one of the lines on my cutting mat. Oh, that gives me space. Then I know that I'm fairly square. But let's start by trimming off that edge. Ooh, can you hear the puppy in the back? She's no puppy. She's a beast. She's a big, big girl. All right, I just got to come around to the other side for this cut, so pardon me just a moment. Poor UPS driver came the other day. He saw that dog. He was out of here. <laughs> he was out of here. She's a big dog, about 140 pounds. But she's a sweetheart. She's really, really a nice dog. But when you see her and you don't know her, you probably be a little unnerved. All right. So let's do two strips of 10. And then we'll unroll and do it a second time. I keep forgetting I've got that little handle, guys. Got to remember because it's so handy. It's a handy handle. So we've got some rain here today. Yesterday was rainy too. I did a crock pot full of ribs last night. That was yummy. 
how's your weather where you are? It's got me craving some home cooked soups. Stay warm. We had a really cold winter and then a really hot spring so far. So I can't really complain. It's been a beautiful, beautiful spring. Hopefully, ah. Oh. I needed two more strips of that one, remember? So let's set these aside and cut two more strips. Fruit fly brain. All right, line her up again. There we go. And we'll do a cut at the 10 and a cut at the 20. Handle. Mm -hmm. All right, now those can go over there. It's just a constant shuffle when you're cutting fabric, isn't it? Shuffle, 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 shuffle. It's also, this table has this nice little tray in here, like it's a cutout. And my pen is in there, my screwdriver's in there, I got pins in there, I got dust in there. It just gets full of all these handy little things. Now I'm just trying to be fun. All right, so let's stack these up and we'll cut a pile of squares and triangles. I'm going to put my salvage to this side. And let's bring over these two as well. The dog. She's a pit bull. She's a pit bull. She's a 140 pound pit bull, I already told them. But she's been putting on some weight, so Matt says she's 150. What's that? Oh, Lucky's. Matt and I just drove out to BC the other day and weather out there was gorgeous. Where we were going is Kamloops and it's quite desert like there. So we rented this little Airbnb and we had a beautiful view of the whole valley. It was really nice. Bit of a whirlwind trip. We were there and back. What was it, hun? About 39 hours, you thought? 39 hours we were gone? About 20 of that was driving. All right. We're cutting 10 inch squares, right? Subcut 15 10 inch squares, then cut three of these in half on the diagonal. All right. So I was talking about my Union Jack pattern that I'm working on earlier. That's a fig tree quilts pattern. And I realized that I'm not very good at following patterns. <laughs> I just kind of like making it work. And when I finally did take the time to stop and read, I had made like so many errors. It's all working out fine. But stop and read the pattern. That is really my advice. Because when you get to a later step and nothing's making sense, that's what's going to happen. All right, so I need three of these squares. I'm going to turn them on the diagonal and slice them in half. And I probably have more than I need, but that's okay. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Now there was these lines on my cutting mat and I have just like put the squares into that little angle that's there on the cutting mat. Oh, he took away my close up. You're not showing close up right now, are you, Will? Okay. Dad slid it out of the way, so don't go to it. So I've just nestled the corner into those lines and it's just holding it really nice and square or it's holding it really nice and on point. And I'm now going to uh, cut from corner to corner. <laughs> Okay, the big girl is here. He's brought in Stitch for you. There she is. There she is. 
Papa calls her the big galuka, getting her treats. <laughs> A guest appearance by Stitch Sparrow. <laughs> and don't worry, if, you ever, if you're ever here and you hear her in the back, she's pretty harmless, but she's a big girl. And she seems to manufacture an alarming amount of slobber, but I think that's <laughs> related to her size. You never see small dogs that slobber. Why is it just big dogs? Uh, <laughs> it's like, it's the jowls. <laughs> Just stores all the spit. <laughs> she knows when you got black pants, she's like, you're a target. She just comes running for you like, I love you. Let me slobber on you. All right. Back to work, Brady. So I've got my 15 squares. Now I'm going to cut three of those squares in half on the diagonal. And we're going to have six triangles. The lips. <laughs> okay, there's my triangles. That handle, you guys. Oh, gosh, I love it. All right, so I got my squares. I got my diagonal, or my triangles. Oh, that's a nice progression of color. That's going to work well, Miss Landon. Good choices. Okay, we've done our gray fox. We're going to cross that off the list. And we cut those on the diagonal. Next, we've got the light gray, which for me is the floral. We're going to cut three strips at 10 inches. And then we need four squares for triangles and one in quarters. Okay, I'm going to pause for a moment and read carefully. Cut three strips at 10 inches. Okay. Then subcut nine 10 inch squares. Three strips. I'm gonna get four out of that. That's gonna give me 12. So I'm gonna have extra. Okay. Four of those squares are gonna be diagonal. And one square we're gonna cut in two diagonal lines to make the corner triangles. Okay, out in the corners. Perfect. I can do this. I can follow instructions, I promise. All right, so we need three strips at 10 inches. That means we can do this all in one shot. Let's just open it up a little bit wider. Well, we're almost done cutting out all these fabrics. Making pretty quick work of it. So you can see this goes pretty fast, doesn't it? Okay, and I need to reach the 30, so we'll open it up a little bit more. There we are. And good, that's nice. We will slice up the 10, the 20, and the 30, and that will give me three 10-inch strips. Gosh, it's nice to be back with you guys. I've sure missed doing this. So a 10 and a... 20 and a 30. Now don't forget to share the video guys. At the end of the show we will do a giveaway. Send you one of these um, nice little rulers that I've been working with today. Let's stack these up. Let's fold this one up. Do 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 do. These are the Cream and Sugar Blenders by Studio E. It seems like every year they release a new set of them. Uh, silvers and whites and caramels and chocolates. And I, I like them so much I order them every year. Sorry, this is the second time I've ordered them. But I noticed that it is Cream and Sugar like Volume 5 or something like that. So that's my assumption is that they come out with new patterns every year. This year there was a little bird print. Oh yeah, you know I ordered that one. Because I'm a sparrow. Okay. So I've got these all stacked up. Nice and tidy. 
So now I'm going to take these strips and cut them into squares. How many different colors in total? So there's four, eight, ten. Ten different fabrics total. Laura, there's ten different fabrics. And so far, this is number eight. So then it's just reminding me that the pattern only calls for nine, but this little cornerstone here, we're not doing in black, we're doing it in green. So that added that extra color. And that's why I labeled everything right on my pattern. If you joined late, then what I was explaining to everybody is that I went through the pattern because Sheila listed all her colors there, the black, the dark gray, all the way down through the dark medium color, the medium color, the light color. So because I didn't use the same colors as Sheila, I went through the pattern and I wrote down the name of my colors beside the directions for cutting. And that just helps me stay organized because I have a fruit fly brain and I need something just to kind of keep me on track. And I also mentioned that I'm using this sticky note and I just move it down the page so that it's right under the section that I'm working on. And that helps me stay a little bit more on track. And then I don't have to reread everything every time, which is a good thing. That takes, takes up time. All right, so I'm just trimming off my salvages. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring the trash can over here. And then I don't have to touch everything twice. Where are we at? Okay, we're cutting 10 inch squares here. And I am cutting through three strips, so six layers of fabric. Yep, that's open. Here we go. 10. And at the 20. And I don't know about you, but I don't have much patience for all these little scraps. That's not a bad size, but I won't do anything with it. So I just usually get rid of it, but you might want to save those for something useful. Now this, I need to pay close attention. Four of these we're going to cut in half on the diagonal. So let's take one, two, three, and four. And then we need a single that we're going to cut twice. So put that one over there. These ones can go into my backgrounds pile. That's looking really nice. So here's my four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to nestle it into that nice little angle on my cutting mat. And then I'm going to line up my ruler from tip to tip and slice through on the diagonal. There we go. Hi, Beverly Hackett. How are you? Because it's been a long time since I chatted with you. Thanks for joining us. All right, so now I got my single square and this one I have to cut twice and that's going to be my tiny little triangles in the corner there. So that's what I'm cutting out right now, but I only need one of those. One square will yield four corners. Lay that out carefully. And the trick here is that I don't want to disturb the fabric. So I want to lift it really carefully. If anything moves, then my next cut won't be very accurate. So I just want to be really careful when I lift that, sometimes it can create a bit of suction and lift your fabrics and then your accuracy is not quite bang on anymore. Okay, here we go. Excellent. Now be careful with those triangles once you've cut them, that um, edge of the triangle is now biased so the fabric will just pull apart and stretch very easily. So handle those with care. 
good. Let's cross that off the list. Are you the type of person that just loves crossing stuff off their list? I am. So I love my little planners. Did you see my video last week on all the planners that we've got? Those are fun. Red, I didn't cut, I didn't cross off, but we definitely cut red, didn't we? Yep. I sure did. So now I need to go back to my white, but let's cut our little cornerstones first. Cornerstone color is sweet pea. That's what I've always called all my little girlies. Little sweet pea. All right, so cornerstones cut three strips at two and a half and then subcut into 49 two and a half inch squares. That I can do. Three strips, three strips, three strips, three strips. I'm going to move this over a little bit. Line that up. Good, good, good. All right, so now. Like I was telling you earlier, I've got the little add-on kit. This is an upgrade kit for your own uh, home ruler. And it's just got that little slider on there that creates a ridge, which makes us really precise. It lines up the fabric at that two and a half inch point. And then I also have my anti-slip uh, sticker on there as well. And that just helps me do really precise and accurate cutting. without having to fiddle too much. I just kind of lay it down and off I go. Two and a half, good. One. It's kind of nice that you can use this little kit to upgrade your own ruler. Because we get used to the things we have. Oh gosh, that handle. Mm, I'm trying to put that one on all my rulers. I'm going to need a million handles ordered, please. All right. So three strips are going to subcut into two and a half inch squares. So I'll get. I sure will. Okay. So for those of you that have just joined us, first of all, welcome. Um, this is our Stash Buster series. And we put all these videos onto the website after the fact, so you can find them uh, really easily at sparrowquiltco.com. We also put them up on YouTube. And if you go to the Stash Busters page on our website, you can see all the prior quilts that we've done. You're also going to want to sign up to receive the free Be Bold pattern. So you'll put your name and your email in there, and then we will send you an email. It doesn't happen instantly. It takes a little bit of time, but you will receive it by the end of the day. And then you can join in on the fun of making this pattern along with us. It's a nice new challenge with some um, curved piecing, but nothing too, too difficult. So I hope that you will join us in the fun for that. Also, if you're just joining us, we like to do a giveaway with each uh, video. So today I'm going to be giving away one of these guidelines rulers, and you can enter by sharing this video. So under the video, you see the option to like, comment, and share. Go ahead and share, and that will share this video with all your quilting buds. Now I'm going to put this little slider back on to my littler ruler, my littler. And it's really quite easy to use. It just kind of pops in and off, on and off. And it just clicks into place. They're really pretty neat little rulers with all their little add-ons and stuff. And it does have the finger guard as well but it's removable too if you don't like it. So that's kind of nice. I like that you can take, take or leave them, leave them or take, them. put them on, take them off. So that's at two and a half. Now I need to turn all my strips. And I always like to put my salvage end to that side. I don't know why I just do. And now we're going to cut these into two and a half inch squares. And those will be my cute little cornerstones. And then we're on to our last fabric, you guys. This just flew by. It's kind of nice to know you can cut out a quilt so quickly. So 49 of these. Okay, let's do it. First, I'm going to trim off my salvage. 
get that out the way. Nobody wants salvage in their quilt. It's those ugly little dots, the ugly little pokes in the fabric. Nobody likes that. So I have got my slider lined up with two and a half. I'm bumping that right up against the raw edge of my fabric. So then this cut here will make me two and a half. And it's got, it's got this nice little marking line here. So I've actually, I can see how square it is. I like that. Get those out of there. Isn't that handy? That out of there. Okay, so I am cutting six at a time. That makes 12. I need 49 in total. There's 18. Now I got 24. I don't know if I'm gonna get 49. 24, 30, 36, 42, 48. Sheila, I'm not going to get 49 out of this. I'm going to have to cut one more strip to get that 49th square. It's close, though. Maybe I can sew all my folds together. Sure, I will. So Matt is suggesting that we do a video tour of the shop a little bit later. So we can definitely do that. I hope you will tune in. You thinking later today, hun? Okay. Maybe after we eat, we will come back and do that. So I got one pile, two piles, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that gives me 48. We're actually going to have to cut four strips to get our 49th. Um, well, I could maybe piece these little folded bits together and create <laughs> enough <laughs> to make a square. That's an option too. I don't have the patience for that. We'll see. I'll keep those just in case. I'm going to try to have the patience for that. I've been working on my patience. I've been hand piecing hexagons and, uh, that requires patience, that's for sure. Okay, so let's scratch off our sweet pea. We got that part done. And next is white. White sashing, we're gonna cut 20 strips of two and a half, and then we're gonna subcut those into 80 rectangles that measure 90, nine and a half by two and a half. So this is what I'm cutting now, this little guy here. Can you guys see the quilting on this? Can you see the beautiful feathers that Sheila quilted in there? She did a beautiful job. I love that alternating direction of feather. Sheila, if you're watching, I love that. Oh, let's take this off. So we're not chopping it up again, right, Laura? We don't need any tape on the fabric. How are we doing for time? Nice. Nice. All right, guys, this is probably one of your last chances to share this video in order to qualify to enter for the ruler giveaway. I'm going to give away one of these guideline rulers, and you're going to love it. So again, we are cutting two and a half inch strips, 20 of them. So let's open this up as much as we can. All right, so I got my slider set at two and a half and I am just gonna start making my way across, getting these nice little strips cut. Oh, don't post your email for the pattern. Go to the website, click the link above this video and you'll see um, a little option there to put in your name and your email address and then you will receive the pattern by email. All right, here's strip number two. 
I should have cut a big chunk off and doubled it up and cut two at once. Small folds for the half squares. Ah, I like the way you're thinking there, Pamela. I will check it out and see if that works. Okay. This single fold stuff is going to make me a little bit crazy real quick. So I'm going to cut off a big chunk. 20 ought to work. And I'm going to fold her in half and then I can make quicker work of this. Then you see, I'm going to fold it in half on itself and then I'm going to cut two strips at once. because I'm impatient and I like to do things quickly. There we go. Okay. So what you just saw me do, I cut 20 inches, I folded it in half, and now I'll cut four cuts, which will actually get me eight. So I'm gonna feel like I'm getting somewhere faster. So my ruler slipped off just a little bit there, but because of the slider, I was able to just bump it back in place and it stopped exactly where it needed to. So that was kind of handy. I like that. Four. This will make six. Okay, so someone must have asked about the rulers. If you go to our website and you click on menu, then you'll see strip cutting rulers, quilting tools first, and then strip cutting rulers, rulers and accessories. And that's where you will find all these groovy little things that I'm using. That one is too exact, so I got to open it up to cut this two and a half, but I will still get two pieces that are two and a half. There we go. So that's two, four, six, eight, and ten. I need to do another ten. So let's go ahead and cut one big chunk. I bet twenty five will do it. I'm going to go a little more than twenty five. So I've got enough to chop off the fold. So I'm going to cut this 25 and a half and then fold it in half and cut my strips out of that. Let's get you out of here. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. There we go. Okay. Whip through these and then all of our cutting will be almost done. I still have to cut these into the rectangles, but I'm just cutting the strips right now. There we go, almost there. Just have to cut the fold off this last one. There we are. Shifted on me just a smidge. Good thing I was watching. All right, this last one's a bit tricky. Just need to be careful with it. Take my time with it, not be in a hurry. This is what I get for trying to do things the shortcut way. Let's just flip it open. Do it properly. Then I won't have any mistakes. That was already open. Oh, I didn't close my blade, you guys. Always close your blade.
And this little strip is just extra. Goodbye, extra. All right, so those are ready to be cut into rectangles. Those need to be nine and a half by two and a half. Put this, do this. Right on the mat, I think. So I got a lot of these. I'm gonna stack them up because that's what I like to do. Fast and easy, fast and easy. Now, hopefully you've been watching all along. Sorry, I got my head down focused on what I'm doing here so I don't mess up. If you've just joined, I hope that you will visit us at the link above this video at sparrowquiltco.com and uh, visit the Stash Busters page where you can enter your name and email and get the free pattern you see behind me. Free pattern of the quilt you see behind me. And we will be back in two weeks, okay? We will not be here next Friday. We are all going to be in Kelowna for Landon's wedding. She and Ryan are getting married. So we won't be here next Friday, but we'll be here the following Friday. We're going to come back this afternoon, do a video tour of the shop, our brand new shop. So join us back here for that. Hopefully you get a notification when we go live. How many is there? Four, four, four. And what else? What else do you need to know? Do you just want to pick a winner for me? So those of you who shared today's video with all your Facebook buds, one of you is going to win a new rotary cutting ruler. Ba, 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 da. I should start at the begin at the bottom always. I always start halfway through, and that messes with things. And I just put them on a horizontal line so that I can see they're nice and straight and square. Because precision is good. Right? <laughs> Precision is good, although I'm not going to kill myself trying. I don't care about the quilt police. You can go arrest someone else. I don't have time for that. You'll never find the quilt police in my shop. Oh, you might. <laughs> never mind, I take that back. All right, so I'm going to zip around to the other side and cut off this edge. Okay, the shop tour will be 1 o'clock our time. Uh, that's mountain daylight time, I guess. Sorry, I got my back to you there, guys. Can I read it? All right. Sally Addison, congratulations. You're the winner of my ruler today. So Sally, what I need you to do is send us a private message, include your email and phone number and your shipping address, and we will get that in the mail to you, okay? Congratulations, Sally. You're going to like this ruler. Not this ruler, that ruler. <laughs> I'm confusing the issue a little here, I see. Oh, we don't need two and a half. No, 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 Brady, don't cut two and a half. You need nine and a half. <laughs> it was close. All right. Maybe I'll just use this one. It'll be much easier. I'm going to cut using the lines on my cutting mat. So the first one is at nine and a half. That means the second one will be at 19. Right? Sorry, I get that funny. Oh, yay, Sally. I'm so glad to hear that. All right. So that was at nine and a half. This one will be at 19. And I'm just going to chop off those end folds. There they go. Perfect. You guys are a goner. That's actually good stuff, so I'm going to keep those. Let's put them here. 
All right, you guys, we are done cutting out that quilt. Next, next, next Friday on June 15th, we are going to gather again, and I will show you how to cut out your quarter uh, circles as well as the background of the quarter circles and we will do all that cutting out in uh, preparation for the piecing of this quilt so you guys hopefully you can join us again in an hour and we'll do a tour of the shop otherwise we will see you in two weeks at 10 30 a.m mountain time uh, for our next stash buster series thanks for joining me today it was really really nice to see you all again or talk at you all again and i will see you in two weeks or maybe this afternoon bye for now everybody i didn't think i was gonna get that all done